witness. My question is more nuanced. You sat in this courtroom while Officer Sines testified that she saw you the night of May 21, 2016, face to face, and didn't see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct, Ms. Hurd? I believe she was testifying about these photographs, and she said that I was not injured in them. Is it your testimony under oath now that Officer Sines testified that she saw injuries on you when she saw you in person on May 21? Sorry, let me clarify. I was testifying that I know that that's what Officer Sines said, that she didn't consider my red puffy face injured. That's what she said. The red puffy face, that was your counsel's question, correct? That was she her said, testimony in the UK. That's incorrect, and you know that, Ms. Hurd. I disagree. It's just inconvenient for you that Officer Sines didn't see injuries on you on May 21, 2016. Isn't it doesn't matter right? what's convenient for me. Right. Officer Tyler Haddon also testified by deposition about being called to the Eastern Columbia building on May 21, 2016. And he also testified no injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that correct? They both said that they did not consider me injured. They did not see injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that what their testimony was? What their testimony was is that they did not consider what my face looked like to be injury. They didn't consider what they walked on in the house damage, but it was. You were sitting here when Officer William Gatlin testified by deposition about being called on May 21 to the Eastern Columbia building, and he also did not observe any injuries on you, did he? he and that's what he testified to. He didn't even know which one I was. No, I think we all saw on video camera, you identify yourself, isn't that correct? I had to because of how far away he was. He didn't even know. He didn't even know who he was. But there after to you see. identified yourself, he looked at you. Isn't that correct? From a distance, yes. And he didn't see any visible injuries either, did he? I don't know what he saw. He testified that he didn't see any visible injuries. Did I he? I would believe that he didn't. Yes. You were also in this courtroom when Alejandro Romero, who worked at the front desk at the Eastern Columbia Building, testified about seeing you on May twenty fifth, two thousand sixteen. Isn't that correct? That is correct. I think he said the 25th. Yeah. And Mr. Romero testified that he didn't see any swelling or bruises on your face when you were talking to him at the front desk. He wouldn't have. No, he wouldn't have, even though he had a habit, because his parents taught him correctly, to look into someone's eyes when speaking to them. Isn't that correct? I know that's what he testified to, yes. Yeah. You testified yesterday that you sought a temporary restraining order on May 27th, 2016 because you wanted to change your locks. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, I do. Those locks were to the penthouses at the Eastern Columbia Building, isn't that correct? That's correct. But you changed the locks to the penthouses on May 22nd, 2016. I attempted to. That's why you felt comfortable having James Franco over the evening of May 22nd, 2016, Ms. Hurd? I do not know when I do not know when James came over. Okay, let's remind you. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 304, which is already in evidence, and play from 254 through 439?
That's you and Mr. Franco on May 22nd, 2016, right, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. And you're taking him up to the penthouses, aren't you? That's where I lived, yes. And it's past 11 p.m. at night, isn't that right? I'm not quite sure of the time it looked, it looked like that. Why don't we pull that video back up? Twenty-two fifty-one. Almost midnight, right? That's uh, or, oh, excuse me, almost eleven o'clock at night. Exactly. Okay. You knew Mr. Depp was out of town the week of May twenty-one, two thousand sixteen, didn't you? I don't know what I knew of his schedule at the time. You knew Mr. Depp was out of town on May twenty-seventh when you went to get the domestic violence restraining order, isn't that right? I don't know if I knew that at the time. You knew, you knew Mr. Depp was heading out on a European tour that week, isn't that right? I'm not quite sure what I understood of his schedule at that time. You knew he wouldn't be back for weeks, right? No, that's incorrect. Let's uh, go back to that recording. It's uh, Defendant's Exhibit 598. Uh, so you testified that you and Mr. Depp were in the car outside of his studio. Is that right? Yes. And you were trying to prevent him from going into his studio to do drugs, right? Uh, yeah, to effectively start another cycle. Right. Not that Mr. Depp was just trying to go into his house to see his daughter, right? His daughter might be one of the people that was in the house at that time, but that's so neither here nor there. That your testimony is now him from entering a cycle. <laughs> Your testimony is now that Mr. Depp does drugs in front of his children? Well, first of all, I know he does. Um, second of all, it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have stopped him from using with his friends, which is the problem, not whether or not his daughter was there. Okay. Um, let's play, please, defendants 598 at 4948 through 5035. 5035. I'm not. I'm itching. I don't want to be doing this. I, I want it just to. Why don't you just say, okay, baby, I understand. I'll go home and you do your thing, hang out with your daughter, and then I'll see you in a couple hours and we'll talk about it. Is it that difficult to say that? Or do you just fucking hate me and you want to be shitty about it? Please. Just fucking. It's not that difficult. Okay? I don't want to stand here.